If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 103 of the career mode Road to Glory here on FIFA 15. We start with a difficult away game against Swansea City at the Liberty Stadium. We've been in very inconsistent form recently, although yesterday we were able to pick up a vital win against Norwich City. Now we'll be hoping for more positive results like that in today's episode, rather than the uh, plethora of defeats we've been picking up recently. So fingers crossed we can improve. They've got Demerel in goal, Volkan Demerel, formerly of Galatasaray or Fenerbahce, I can't quite remember which, but I know he's from Turkey. So he's a very good goalkeeper, actually, and uh, very experienced, i.e. he's quite old. But uh, it'll be difficult to get the ball past him. We'll try and do our best, though. Obviously, Swansea, you expect, are going to play a, uh, a very heavily possession-based game of football, trying to play the ball around me rather than just playing it over the top like they are here to get in behind. Although when you've got Nathan Dyer out wide, you can't really excuse that. It's uh, Or you can excuse that, rather, because uh, when you've got someone with that amount of pace in behind, then uh, you have to utilise that. But fortunately, for me we were able to defend that particular chance quite well and keep them out but again Nathan Dyer this time on the other side getting in behind Gilfie Sigerson with a shot but another top save by Galese keeps them out and it's time for us to perhaps have a chance of our own they've got Nathan Dyer out wide we've got Nicholas Spaller they've both got 90 plus pace in fact I think Spaller might actually be a little bit quicker than Nathan Dyer but Georgiev here trying to get in behind he's left footed of course so I was trying to make sure I could get back onto that left side but there were just too many defenders around and not enough space to be able to work it properly but Senorelli this this time, plenty more space for Spaller on the left. I do get the ball into the box. Unfortunately, it went out, but it's a shame because the ball ended up in the back of the net thanks to a good header, but that actually was the, uh, the half-time whistle. But I guess technically we had the ball in the back of the net. It just won't count to us yet, but we are still at 0-0 and we are still confident of getting ourselves a victory here if we possibly can. Evelyn Popov, they brought off the bench. Nice little ball roll there to open up a little bit more space before having this shot, but it went well wide. A pretty poor effort from him and you would have expected better, but Fabian Cassida's goals have dried up recently. He goes on a nice little run here, sets through Georgiev. He's going to go on a nice run around the outside, committing the defender to the floor and unfortunately it's the same sort of situation as the Popov one. Really should have done better. We've seen uh, George have put those into the back of the net probably 80% of the time so far this season now that he's come into the club and started to grow quite nicely but unfortunately not the accuracy there that we needed but uh, Wayne, Routledge, Wayne Routledge had the accuracy but fortunately Galese had the reactions but Georgiev is in behind again here up against a uh, one-on-one -on -one defender again just going to power around the outside this time rather than defender committing he makes the turning side really well and then again it's a really poor finish the finesse shot normally would have found the bottom corner there but that was a good three or four yards wide of the goal particularly disappointing I'm not really too sure what's going on with Georgiev here his finishing has been extremely poor today but that is a gorgeous ball over the top by Christian Panier into Benny Kofobe Drives the shot low with the left foot towards the far bottom corner, but a brilliant save by Volkan Demerel keeps us out in the final stages. We do get a nil-nil draw. Now, it's not the worst of games, but considering the uh, the way we had some really clear-cut chances there through Georgiev and Afobe, I was pretty disappointed not to have come away with a win, so I wanted to try and bounce back if I could against Stoke City, although I guess we kept a clean seat and avoided defeat. Uh, no rhyme was intended there against uh, Swansea City, but as you can see, Stoke currently sit above us. Uh, only two places, but actually quite away. Eight points above us in the table, so you can see where our poor run of form has left us right now. Quite out of touch with the teams in the top half of the table, but uh, Fobe got himself a start in this one because Cassida just wasn't performing. There's a couple of rotation players in there as well. You see uh, Attila Fiola and uh, Salah Solomon, the two rotation centre-backs playing in this one as well. They've got a striker I don't actually know too much about or in fact anything about Quaker, Quirker. I'm not really too sure how to pronounce that. Quirker. Uh, I don't know anything about him, so uh, I was just kind of going to concentrate my efforts on stopping Jonathan Walters and Marco Anaovic creating much. So we pounced on the Austrian there, getting the ball to Benikafobe. He's not got the quickest of feet, so I had to play it off to Georgiev here on his right-hand side. Two minutes into the game, or three minutes into the game, four minutes into the game, however many minutes it was, it was an easy chance, one-on-one, -on -one, right-footed into the back of the net. His finishing was terrible in the game before, and he made up for it immediately by putting us in front. And then, unfortunately, we have an immediate setback. Uh, th that was the only shot of the game to this point and then uh, unfortunately Michael O'Halloran through a strong challenge a rather typical Stoke City challenge has to come off injured so uh, he's going to be out for quite a while actually unfortunately about three months so uh, we're going to miss him but a good reaction there from Galese to react to the header from Stephen Ireland to keep them out we head into the second half now rather typically against Stoke City it was a very physical game they kind of had uh, a 
you know, kind of a gruesome midfield battle that ended up with not many chances on goal. Although Galese was lucky there that he was in no man's land and the ball went over the top of the bar from the header. And we find ourselves right at the very end of the game. Honestly, there was barely any chances in this one whatsoever. It was such a scrappy game. But Nikofobe in behind, looking for this sort of cross goal, takes the deflection, but Begovic commands his area very well, goes up and picks the ball off. So we do only get the one goal. But fortunately, we only needed the one goal. Two clean sheets back-to-back -back is something we haven't had in a very long time here at Cambridge United. So I'm delighted with a point and then a victory against Stoke. Gives us the confidence to go into the next game away from home against Stamford Bridge. And maybe even think about getting something from the game. Although Chelsea have been obviously very strong against us in not only this season since we've been in the Barclays Premier League, but the past two or three years because we faced them in the FA Cup in the second season and the third season before having them as a league rivals here in the fourth but as you can see a pretty average Chelsea side with uh, Nathan Ake at centre-back Gonzalo Higuain up top and uh, they've actually got Sergio Aguero on the bench as well as Fernando Torres so we'll be hoping to see the Spaniard not the Argentinian if they are going to make a change up top but obviously we need to make sure that we deal with Gonzalo Higuain initially as well. Cassida gets his first team place back and obviously Georgiev is going to continue up top now that he's been able to make a, a goal scoring return and uh, actually uh, Gabi Adini is back in the first team lineup, back from injury as we lost uh, Aguadar in yesterday's episode for uh, another three month spell. Gabi Adini is now back so almost as one comes back from injury the other one got injured and took his place on the uh, on the injury table but Jenkins Tikui has a chance to give us the lead here with a free kick in the 26th or from 26 yards in the 25th minute but it's a good save by Thibaut Courtois and then Scheller has the corner they have a set piece of their own gets knocked onto the edge of the box with uh, Felipe Luis rather smartly whips it back out to Scheller brings it down well he's going to get it into the box again Higuain with the header but a top save by Galassi up top towards his top left hand side to palm it away and we keep the scores level at nil nil. Uh, Ramirez is uh, coming forward here. We're in stoppage time now at the end of the first half. Ramirez in linking up well with his Brazilian counterpart Felipe Luis and then William shields the ball well though I brought the keeper out committed thinking that William was going to turn and have the shot. In fact he was extremely clever there. He held his back to the goal and then laid it off to a teammate to put into an empty net so we find ourselves 1-0 down unfortunately and then we found ourselves 2-0 down in the second half just before the hour mark a brilliant finish from Schella drilling it hard and low in off the post to make it Chelsea 2 Cambridge United 0 and then that really was game over as far as I was concerned we were going to try and get ourselves one back if we could but I didn't feel confident of getting two I was kind of hoping for a more uh, you know similar game to the Stoke one where we could sneak a 1-0 win but Harrison Dunk couldn't keep the uh, the rebound in after a good save from Courtois from Francisco Senorelli and then Georgiev has plenty of space on the far side for Senorelli again who came off the bench and actually performed quite well he's going to have a shot again from the edge of the box here and uh, unfortunately that wasn't quite as accurate as it needed to be Courtois probably had his angles covered despite not being overly concerned or not despite being overly confident rather that uh, it was going wide he really flew at that but uh, again had it been on target would have had his angles covered so unfortunately we end the uh, episode with a 2-0 defeat but two better results so far we are actually moving to uh, bring in Anton Bridge a right winger that has the potential to get into the mid or low to mid 70s if he progresses quite nicely as you can see 71 to 75 so we're going to bring him in it reached May or we've reached May so that his overall jumped and we'll bring him in now and hopefully we can send him out on loan in the next season and uh, he'll pick up some uh, some good first team experience and start to grow as a professional I am going to use the, uh, the money that I get from my final position in the Barclays Premier league to go towards some youth scouts to try and pick up some good young talents to help us improve over the next few uh, couple of seasons as we hopefully will make a push for Europe next year we currently sit slap bang mid table with three games to play Swansea got a game in hand on us although they do sit four points behind we sit four points ahead of three teams and then a full seven points behind Arsenal so 10th is probably going to be the best place we can finish so far this season because uh, with only nine points left available and Arsenal with a game in hand don't think we're going to be able to close the gap on anyone above us so 10th uh, is going to be the highest we're going to finish hopefully we can stay above the teams below us that are all on 42 points and uh, maintain our mid-table finish but I'm pleased with that 10th ish in uh, the Barclays Premier League for your first season up is uh, not too bad at all especially with the quality of squad we've got but there are three games left so we'll, we'll deal with those over the next few days obviously tomorrow we'll have uh, two games and a squad report and then we'll probably on Wednesday have the final game and then a season roundup but that will bring today's episode to a close thank you very much for watching Drop the video a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, check the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days and I will see you next time.